Are you learning how to use a stethoscope for the first time? Using your stethoscope is an essential part of your assessment skills if you're in healthcare. Join me in this video where I provide a quick and easy tutorial and help beginners like you understand how to use your stethoscope correctly. Are you ready? Let's get into it. Hi everyone, my name is Professor Jess B and this is LJ. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, this channel was created to support nursing and healthcare students just like you. As a nursing professor and educator, I offer tips and expert advice that will help you succeed in school and in your new career. If this is something that you're interested in, show me some love and support. Hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on weekly videos. This thing right here can tell us a lot about our patients, right? I mean, cues, clues, lots of different things that's going on with our patient. This is our tool. Now, this tutorial will be covering a few aspects of using our stethoscope. Part one, we'll talk about what the different parts of the stethoscope are. And part two, we'll talk about how you use the stethoscope correctly. By the end of this video, you'll be more comfortable with your stethoscope and you'll be using it like a pro. Let's start with the basics and review the different parts of the stethoscope and how they work. It's important to help you use the stethoscope the way it was designed to be used. So here we have a typical stethoscope that any nurse would use. You have your earpieces that are placed in your ears and I'll show you the correct way of doing that later on in this video. You have your ear tubes, and then you have your binaural spring, the U-shaped part of the stethoscope. You have the tubing and you have the little stem that connects the tubing to the end piece. So the stem right here. Think of this like your on and off switch and I'll show you what I mean a bit later. And finally, the chest piece, which is strategically placed on your patient. Okay guys, now that you know the names of each part of the stethoscope, I wanna focus on two very important parts that you will be using pretty much all the time. They are your chest piece, so the diaphragm and the bell, and your ear pieces, okay? Those, those two parts are really, really important. We're gonna start with the chest piece. The chest piece is one of the most important parts of your stethoscope because this little guy right here, okay, detects, captures, and transmits sounds. I like to tell my students to think of their chest piece as a microphone. You hold it close to the source of the sound and it amplifies the sound so you can make a clinical judgment about what you're hearing. Understanding how your chest piece works is key to your assessment because it includes two very acoustic abilities. The diaphragm, on your chest piece is the large round part right here, okay? It's large, and you'll notice, compared to the other side, and flat. And we use it to listen to broad areas of the body. We also use it to listen to high frequency or high pitch sounds. For example, breath sounds and bowel sounds, and you might also even see this placed over arteries like when you take a blood pressure manually, right? We place it firmly over the patient's skin so that it creates a firm seal. Now the bell, on the other hand, this little guy right here on the other side is quite different. The bell is the smaller concave part of the diaphragm or of the, of the chest piece, excuse me. And it's used to auscultate lower frequency or lower pitch sounds. So for example, vascular sounds like heart murmurs or brouets. You might also notice that the bell is used more often with infants and children. Why? Simply because it just has a smaller surface area compared to the diaphragm. Now, when you're using the bell, you place it very lightly over the patient's skin. Now, a great way to remember what type of sound the bell transmits is to remember the mnemonic bell low, bell low, okay? The bell transmits low sounds, hence bell low, okay? So now that you know the difference between the diaphragm and the bell, it's really important to know how they work on the specific stethoscope you are using. 
Some stethoscopes may have a one-sided chest piece or two-sided chest piece. The one-sided chest piece only has one large end piece. So this large part right here, okay? It only has the one size and it acts as a bell and a diaphragm. So think of it as like a two-in-one deal. You get one large chest piece, which acts as both a bell and a diaphragm. Now, on the other hand, a two-sided stethoscope, like the one I have here, um, has the bell on one side and the diaphragm on the other. If you have a two-sided stethoscope, you will need to check whether your diaphragm is on or off. Now, to do this, you simply rotate the stem so this guy right here, okay? You rotate the stem of your stethoscope and you should hear like a little click. Now the best way to check if your diaphragm is on is to do what I like to call a mic check, okay? Stick with me guys. This is where you put your ear pieces in and you gently tap to see if the diaphragm is on. So just like this, I put my ear pieces in, nice and snug, and I'm just, just gonna gently tap on my diaphragm. I should hear the sound amplified. If I don't, okay, I'll just switch it. I'll hear that little click and I'll tap. And uh, for me, it's off. So I know my diaphragm is off and my bell is on. So what I'm gonna do is just switch, click the switch, tap, 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 and I definitely hear that the diaphragm is on. Okay, so that's what I like to call my mic check. Let's talk about earpieces. It seems pretty straightforward that these little guys go into your ears and any old way, but one of the biggest mistakes I see many students doing is inserting their earpieces incorrectly. You know when we typically use earphones, we see the little like L and the R and we know which one to insert in the left ear, which one to insert in the right ear. Well, unfortunately, stethoscopes don't come with that extra help. Instead, you need to remember to place your earpieces facing forward, okay? You see the binaurals or most of the stethoscopes? They're built with um, the earpieces at about a 15 degree angle, okay? But what I want you to remember is to point your earpieces forward towards the bridge of your nose or away from you. This ensures that the tips fill your ear canal so you can block out any, any unwanted sounds. I can't tell you how many times I've witnessed students trying to auscultate something and they can't hear, and that's because they don't have their earpieces in correctly, okay? Now, if you insert your earpieces in backwards, pointing towards you, you actually obstruct the transmission of sounds and you'll potentially miss key information about your patient. So, remember, point your earpieces away from you like this, Okay, so if my earpieces are pointing away from me or towards the bridge of my nose so that I can block out any unwanted noise and get the best acoustic performance. Using a stethoscope is one of the best tools that nurses and other healthcare providers use to give them essential clues about their patients. Now with students, it will take time and practice for you to, to know when and how to use your stethoscope correctly. That's what your lab and clinical courses are for. So really spend some time, even at home, practicing and getting more comfortable with using the diaphragm, using the bell, and even inserting your earpieces correctly. Hey guys, thanks for joining me on the JLT channel today. I promise I've got more good content for you, like this video over here. And don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, and even share this video with a friend because it's just like that. <laughs>